You're fired. You're fired from everywhere. You're fired from the fucking universe. Welcome to In Defense Of, making the case for overlooked, forgotten, or derided movies in five minutes or less. If you don't have five minutes, here's five seconds. <laughs> Today, in defense of Hideous, a 1997 comedy horror aimed squarely at B-movie devotees. I don't want to go to jail. There are lesbians there. Businessman Napoleon Lazar collects biological oddities, the preserved corpses of mutated creatures. He buys an expensive and unique two-headed baby from black market dealer Belinda Yost, which is immediately stolen by rival collector Dr. Lorca. Lazar, Belinda, her secretary Elvina and private eye Leonard visit Lorca's castle to retrieve the rarity, which unbeknown to them is very much alive and capable of resurrecting the other specimens in Lorca's collection. To fully understand Hideous, we have to understand where it came from. This is a Full Moon movie. Full Moon started in 1989 and almost exclusively released director video horror and science fiction movies. The genius of Full Moon's business model is that they were able to consistently pump out new movies every couple of months. Their innovative Video Zone featurette would appear at the end of every title, including a making of the movie you just seen and updates on forthcoming releases. This enabled Full Moon to build and maintain an audience not just for individual franchises but for their entire studio. Hideous is not a movie that was ever intended for the mainstream market. This is aimed purely at the full moon audience, and it is so much fun. Hideous is one of those films that lives and dies on its premise. A cast of oddball characters trapped in a castle with reanimated mutant babies. If that doesn't interest you, nothing I can say will change your mind, but you are missing out on one hell of a fun time. Part of that is the cast. It's abundantly clear that everybody working on this movie had a blast, and it seeps through into every performance. You would expect actors to ham it up in a flick like this, but they really are given full license to choose on as much scenery as they want. My life. A shame. It's apt that one of our leads is Mel Johnson Jr., whose most famous role was also mutant related. Our characters are stereotypes turned up to 11. The ditzy blonde is absurdly stupid. <laughs> what, me too? Yes! yes. The gold digger spends the entire movie scowling, except when money's involved. The one exception is Sheila. It's never made quite clear what she is. Dr. Lorca's assistant, lover, bodyguard, all of the above. But she spends the entire movie dressed like this. The babies, four of them, each with their own distinct design and characteristics, are limited in what they can do, but they're kept in the shadows to hide their limitations. This really works for the two-headed baby who is genuinely creepy at times. There is this one scene in Hideous that's really famous in B-movie circles. Hey, what do you do walking around like that, with no top on? I'm free. I'm proud. I'm woman. This scene just epitomizes the movie and Full Moon's MO in general. So what's with all this table sitting stuff anyway? Any holes that I can pick, the terrible acting, the obvious cheapness, some pacing problems, are unjust. Nobody is expecting Hideous to win any awards. 1997 was a strange time where old technology was being replaced by the new. To illustrate this, in Hideous we do see an instant message being sent, at that time a relatively new concept to the public. But there's also a reference to a portable phone. In about 60 seconds, you're going to pick up your portable phone, you're going to call someone. As if cell phone or mobile phone aren't the de facto terms yet. Around this time, the arrival of DVD meant studios were able to cast big name actors and decent, medium budget straight to rental releases. Unable to compete, the low budget straight to video industry began to die off. As a result, it's around 1997 that the quality of Full Moon's output severely drops. They're still going now, and they have released some titles since that have built followings, but for me, a lot of their post 97 output is borderline unwatchable and unbearably cheap. You will still see Full Moon titles get recommended, but they are always from their peak years. I feel as though Hideous gets lumped in with the latter day releases and overlooked for that reason. The glory days of Full Moon are undoubtedly the first half of the 90s, but I reckon they officially end with Hideous. Sheila, seal the castle. There's really nothing quite like Hideous, but Basket Case is a significantly more popular campy horror also about murderous miniature deformities. Hideous is the definition of a B-movie. Over-the-top acting, absurd dialogue, ridiculous premise. Full Moon made B-movies for B-movie fans, and Hideous is throwaway trash of the most entertaining variety. 
There are some full moon releases that I'm sure I'll cover in the future and there are others that I like but not enough to really go into so I recommend them here. Mandroid is a science fiction film about a motion controlled robot that the military tries to steal. It feels like a pilot for a show that was never commissioned and despite being set in modern day it has this engaging World War II aura about it. This person does not appear in the film. In fact this is probably the original artwork and title commission before the film was even written. Seed People is basically Invasion of the Body Snatchers but with little alien puppets. It's like a toned down hideous and it features a really uncomfortable age gap between the romantic leads. Dr. Mordred was a Doctor Strange adaptation before Full Moon lost the rights but it's still obviously Doctor Strange. Try it in a double bill with the official Marvel version. 